The temptation is great to skip right over this morning's story from the Old Testament. Imagine God asking you to kill and sacrifice your only son as a test of one's obedience and faithfulness, responding out of fear. The story of Abraham's willingness to sacrifice Isaac is a horrific story of an abuse of God, which is far from what we hold to be true. Moreover, the notion that anyone would use this ancient text to teach what it means to be faithful is beyond comprehension. Walter Brueggemann, a renowned Hebrew scholar, believes that the story is likely a result of folk memories that were crafted in the most imaginative way to describe Abraham's utter faith in God and the embodiment of trust in God, trusting that God would provide and nothing would happen to his beloved son. Another commentary suggests that the sole purpose of the story was actually to prevent such acts of human sacrifice, which had occurred in some cultures long ago. While this is still a dreadful story tell, such explanations offer some understanding. Jesus is thank- teaches us, thankfully, to welcome each other in the name of God. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me, says Jesus. In the Gospel of Matthew, it is suggested that there are various forms of welcome with different levels of reward. For even one who gives a cup of water to a little one in the name of a disciple will be rewarded for this kindness in God's kingdom. One gets the idea that welcoming a prophet and welcoming a righteous person requires something different from us in the same way that extending a cup of water to a person in need. All acts are worthy of a reward. I suspect that welcoming the righteousness, the righteous, is not unlike offering kind words and a warm greeting to to fellow churchgoers who wake early on Sunday morning to attend church regularly. We are the faithful, baptized into the body of Christ, who pledge our support, sharing what has been given to us. Standing on the steps of the church is one of my favorite things to do, to say welcome, happy Sunday morning to all of you and to people who visit. We are the community of faith who gather. The act of welcoming a prophet is a bit more difficult depending on the side of justice you stand. To the privileged and the less fortunate, the welcoming a prophet is a gift from God as he or she proclaims justice and mercy and love. For the rest of us, however, their word can often sting and cut to the quick of our core. Prophets often speak a truth that transcends the world that we negotiate every day. The Reverend Dr. William J. Barber II of the Poor People's Campaign is one of those prophets who is seen widely as having such a voice. Welcoming him, if you take heart, to his words and his messages are a bit harder than the kind welcome at church. Someone who I carry with me in my heart is a man who walked into church one day, into a meeting, he listened, and then he called us all hypocrites, along with sharing a few other choice words that he declared that day. I remember running out of the parish hall after him to ask why he felt this way. He had a lot to say. Despite it all, we would become good friends He would attend church regularly, sitting quietly most of the time. Eventually, I would hear his story, his struggles, his passion, his love of God. This is a man who quoted scripture with ease, who was a gifted artist, lived on the streets, could support himself by collecting and selling what other people would throw away, 
and exemplified what it meant to live faithfully with God. Both of us would describe himself as a seer. I'd also say that it was harder for our church community to welcome him, but he belonged there too. As to giving a cup of water to someone in need, especially a little one, this is an easy welcome to give most of the time. If we have time to stop, if we have easy access to a bottle of water, if we do not need to clean up after the little one, or we do not need to clean the bathrooms after that. You get the idea, right? Welcoming gets harder when it's not so easy. Or perhaps it's not water, but something to eat, a few dollars to spare, a place to rest in the shade, or another essential human need that may not be met. How can we help so many people thirsting for a cup of H2O or a cup from the living well of life? Welcoming is not so easy. And yet this is the very act of love at the heart of Jesus' ministry and proclamation of God's love of us. Jesus' ministry was all about radical welcome and invitation from the get-go. From the moment he called his disciples saying, follow me, to the fishing of people, to his welcoming of little children, and to his healing of body and mind and spirit through loving relationships, and providing a home with God, a place where we can rest, where we are loved, given bread and a cup to drink. I would agree that welcome is all about taking action in our lives and here at church, especially with the children of God who we might find most difficult to welcome with love and forgiveness. As is often the case, we must be in a good place ourselves when we welcome others to dwell among us. Caring for self is foremost. It's the putting on of one's own mask before putting on the child's mask in an airplane in case of an emergency. Then when we are in that good space and grounded in God, we can open wide our hearts and our minds to all people with a warm welcome, trusting in the one who welcomed us home. This is the welcome that we can offer when able and ready, ideally taking turns when needed. The story of God, Abraham and Isaiah is Isaac, as difficult as it is, makes me think of our siblings in the armed forces who serve and sacrifice their lives for the independence and freedom of this country and the world. Their faithful service can be the ultimate sacrifice one can give, and given freely by themselves and their parents and their families for the good of humankind. Let us on July 4th remember the sacrifices given for us. Let us give thanks to the freedom we share and let us commit ourselves freely to welcome all whom we meet along the way. Amen. <laughs>